Hi everyone, this is Justin from Black Box of My Car with the Skyview G1 and the Skyview G6 dash cams. Uh, the one we have on the left here is the Skyview G6. So let's just do a quick unboxing of the Skyview G6. So first thing you'll see is the main camera unit. This is what you've seen in the you know on the product page and whatnot. So the wedge shape design, uh, very sleek. And we also have this extra add-on here. Uh, some some people might be confused what this is for. This is basically you know we have the power cables and all the cables coming out of the back of the Skyview G6. Um, and basically you use this you can hide that wire and feed it directly into your headliner kind of blends it in so it looks like it's part of maybe the mirror or rain sensor or something like that um, but basically with the Skyview G6 we have a simple one and a half inch screen there some buttons along the bottom a lot of cooling uh, cooling on, on the sides cooling up top uh, and on the other side as well and then you have this uh, dial on the side which lets you uh, rotate the angle of the camera uh, so it doesn't matter you know what kind of application you have it on whether you have a window that's very upright or one that's uh, you know more raked uh, it will still work on the top of the uh, G6 you actually see the adhesive mount so part of the reason uh, why you might go with the Skyview G6 is going to be the more discreet design than uh, other dash cams uh, in this price range uh, the reason why is with this adhesive mount you don't have a you know really tall camera you know it doesn't have to hang off from the window very low uh, so it's very discreet and basically with this one you can slide it the bracket and it will come right off so you can still hide your camera if you need to if you don't want to leave it in your car overnight um, you can definitely do that just take that off um, but otherwise most people will just leave this permanently in the car because you can't really see it from the outside Inside the box, quite simple, we just have the power cable. It uses a mini USB, so it's a pretty universal one. You can find these anywhere. And a simple user manual. There we go. And the user manual just unfolds like so. And it tells you some basic features and uh, functions of the Skyview G6. Next, we'll just have a quick look at the Skyview G1. So it has a sleeve on the box. Just need to slide that off. And basically, we have the updated version of the Skyview G1 here. Um, the design is a little bit more sleek than the old one. Uh, dimensionally, it's about the same. Um, but you'll see it's got a little bit more of a curved uh, design to it compared to some of the older pictures you'll see on our website. And with the G1, you have a bigger screen, so it is a 2.4 inch LCD screen. So it's a bit better option for, you know, if you actually want to view videos on your camera, it is a little bit better than the G6. Inside the box, similar story with the G1. Uh, you do get a USB cable. So this is for, you know, file transfer, uh, stuff like that, if you want to use it with your computer. And then it comes with a pretty long, uh, also a mini USB power cable as well. So same thing with the G6, you have a very universal power cable, uh, very straightforward and easy to use. Uh, different from the G6, however, you have the suction cup mount. So with the suction cup mount, again, this is the revised design. This is a little bit simpler, it uses a, you know, a screw and a ball type uh, method. And it makes it a little bit sleeker than the old style, which had a you know physical screw that was uh, made a bit taller. So this one, a little bit easier to use. Basically, you take the um, mount there, and on the top of the camera, you'll see there is a little slot there. You just need to slide it into the slot, like so. Afterwards, you just need to screw this, uh, turn this uh, knob down and that will tighten up the mount so it's very sturdy and if you need to loosen it to adjust your angle you just turn this and you can move it around a bit you'll also notice on the side of the G1 we do have a HDMI output there uh, that's if you need to play back the video on your TV screen also in the box you'll find a user manual so very similar stuff just your basic specs and uh, basic function but these cameras are honestly so easy to use that you won't really need to refer back to this manual so both these cameras are super straightforward to use all you need to do is plug in the cigarette jack adapter uh, for the power cable and then plug this into your camera and it's good to go so for the G6 again the power cable is on the back 
plug that in and it lights up. And it takes about five seconds to get started with the uh, camera. The G1, we have a power cable input on the right side. Again, we have the light on the back and it starts up. So about the same startup time, they use basically the same uh, interface. Uh, so we have a menu button, uh, change between the different menus, and you can go up and down and click the open. Another thing you can do with both of these cameras is you can change the mode. So obviously the default mode upon power up is going to be your video mode. Uh, if you want, you can hit the uh, M button and hold it down. That will switch over to the camera mode. So, you know, in case you got in an accident or something like that, you can take this camera out of the car and actually take some pictures if you need to. And this is the playback mode. Uh, so if you have any pictures and videos on there, this is where it would be. And then back into video mode. So while the G6 has a basically the same interface, uh, the buttons are a little bit different. We have a power button on the left that can turn on and off the screen. We have the menu button on the right of the power button and that will basically give you the options for the settings. And then we have this uh, middle button which is for the emergency mode so that can tag a file as an emergency or an event uh, so it doesn't get overwritten. And we have the mic button. Now what the mic button actually does is the same thing as holding down the M button on the G1. So that will cycle through the different modes. So now we're in the picture mode, playback mode, and back into video mode. So the reason we're making this video today about the uh, Skyview G1 and G6 is that they're actually our favorite entry level dash cams. Uh, for about 100 bucks or less, uh, you actually get a very good image quality and they're one of the most reliable devices that we carry in our uh, lineup. Uh, in terms of track record, they've been really great. Pretty simple and easy to use. Uh, they can only support a 32 gig memory card so that some users might be uh, restricting. But because they're designed to only run when you're driving, uh, 32 gigs will actually get you about six hours. And for the average person, you're only driving you know, less than two hours a day. So a 32 gig card is actually quite adequate. If you do plan on hardwiring, we do have other recommendations. Between the G6 and the G1, there are gonna be some differences. The G6 has a much wider angle lens, so it's 170 degrees uh, compared to the G1, which has a 140 degrees. Uh, with the 170, you are, you are going to capture a bit more video in there. Uh, so if something's happening on the edge of the frame, you'll see a video we have posted of a hit and run that uh, happened way out on the edge of the frame. And thanks to the 170 degree lens of the G6, we were able to capture that. Uh, with the G1, however, with a narrower lens, 140 is actually fairly wide. Uh, I still get a pretty good range of view, uh, but you will actually get a sharper image with the G1. Uh, so if you're you know, very concerned about picking up license plates, you'll probably get a better uh, image out of the G1 than the G6. But for just basic driving and having your evidence there in case you ever need it, uh, the G6 is perfectly adequate for that. Now obviously if you want a more permanent solution, the adhesive mount is going to be a better option. You know, Adhesive mounts are always going to give you a more uh, stable uh, mounting and it's going to be a bit better under vibration and different temperature variations. The adhesive mount is a bit better for that. Uh, suction cup mounts tend to be more uh, susceptible to vibration and they don't do as well under extreme temperatures. Uh, you might need, find yourself having to remount that camera every now and then because uh, it might have loosened up over time. If it's something that you want to move between vehicles, it is a better option because it's very easy. You just undo that suction cup with a clip on the back, you know, and then you can easily transfer from vehicle to vehicle. Both of these cameras do come with a power cable that's long enough to uh, wire tuck under your A-pillar and along your headliner, so they can be a very discreet solution uh, if that's what you're looking for, uh, compared to some other Chinese cameras where you have maybe a one meter or two meter power cable, which just isn't really enough uh, to tuck away neatly. As far as pros and cons go with the video quality, for daytime they do offer really good image quality but the performance does drop off a bit at night. Uh, so unlike some of the cameras that have maybe a Sony sensor, uh, you're not going to see the same kind of dynamic range at night. If you are looking to get into something that does have a parking mode and 
really good uh, dynamic range, you might want to consider something like the FineView CR500 and maybe the uh, Blackview DR3500. Both these are built with a parking mode by motion detection from Blackview and FineView and are really good options if you are worried about a hit and run or vandalism type uh, scenario.